Hey guys, I'm back and today we're going to talk about the fasting eating cycle in a little more detail, but I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. It's actually very interesting. Okay, so over here we have the mechanism that occurs when we're eating, okay? Over here we have what happens when we are fasting, when we're not eating. So the cell needs to be fed. So when you're eating, insulin is involved to feed the cell. So what it's doing it's taking the excess glucose out of the blood and it's feeding the cell. Now, if you're consuming a lot of carbs, which most people do, it'll then take uh, some of that sugar and it converts into stored sugar called glycogen. But we don't have a lot of glycogen storage. We have like a limit. We could only store like 2000 calories. Anything more goes to fat and cholesterol. We have an unlimited capacity to store fat. So this is where most people end up right down here. Okay, so now when we're not eating and we're fasting, there's another hormone involved called insulin-like growth factor. So insulin-like growth factor is very similar to insulin in that it does also feed the cell glucose. But the glucose is not coming from the diet. It's coming from the stored glucose as glycogen from your liver and from your muscle. So basically, your cell always gets fed one way or the other, either from the food or from the storage, okay? But we don't have a lot of glycogen, so if you fast a little bit longer, it'll start tapping into the fat and release that and feed the cell. So we have this nice little balance going back and forth. So IGF is under complete control of the growth hormone, which is produced by the pituitary and it works through the liver. And a lot of the functions of IGF are the same as growth hormone. So this is also involved in releasing fuel to the cell as well, but I'm not gonna get into that much detail. So if we have enough growth hormone, we have enough IGF and everything is cool. And by the way, our bodies have about 100 times in quantity in volume, this hormone to insulin. What does that mean? It means that our bodies were designed to not eat way more than we eat. And the problem that we're running into right now is people eat too frequently and they eat too many carbs. Now, recently I did a, um, an interview with a guy that was on The Biggest Loser. He was, I think, 325 pounds. He lost, I think, 114 pounds in three months. And then he gained it all back. He found some videos that I did. He liked the concept of healthy ketosis and intermittent fasting. He then proceeded to lose uh, 90 pounds. Okay, so he did very, very well. But what was fascinating about his interview, which I'm gonna put the link down below, was what he ate during The Biggest Loser versus my recommendations as far as eating. And they were definitely different because I recommended no fruit, potatoes, but I think the biggest difference is that he started doing fasting because when he was on The Biggest Loser, he was like eating every hour. Okay, then he was snacking at night. So you're just like constantly raising insulin over and over because every time you eat, you spike insulin. So our bodies were designed to fast a lot longer than we eat. And when we do that, we all sorts of health problems clear up. When you combine frequent eating with a chronic carbohydrate consumption with low potassium, you get massive problems with huge spike in insulin. So as we increase insulin and we become insulin dominant, we start not needing to use this anymore. So we actually suppress IGF, we suppress growth hormone. Now, if we compound that with age and liver damage, because this will eventually create a fatty liver and uh, inflammation and eventually cirrhosis of the liver, if we compound that, then we actually get even um, a lesser amount of growth hormone and a lesser amount of IGF. Okay, so now let me just show you what happens. We have all this carbohydrate and all this insulin being produced, the body will start to protect itself. So it develops insulin resistance. Okay, so now what happens is we need more and more insulin to create the same effect. So what happens is when we have more insulin, we, just, we still have normal blood sugars, okay? Because we have more insulin to lower them. So when you get checked, like, oh, you're fine, you don't have diabetes, but they never check for insulin. So give it more time, and then the pancreas starts getting exhausted. Now we get to the point where this mechanism is overwhelmed. So now what happens is the blood sugars start going higher and higher and higher. 
and that's what we call uh, diabetes. But before that, you may have a spike in insulin and end up with hypoglycemia because there's too much insulin that's pushing the blood sugar down. Well, IGF comes in there to protect you against that. So we have a combination of growth hormone, IGF, keeping the sugar up so it doesn't go down too low. But if we have liver damage because of these factors right here, we no longer has, have the protective effect against the low blood sugars. And so you have other hormones that are countering insulin as well. And that would be cortisol. Okay, that's the stress hormone. That's one of them. And adrenaline. So this basically would just turn your muscles into sugar. So that's why you'll start seeing people with uh, a loss of uh, muscles in their leg. Uh, they get really kind of thin legs, no butt, and it's all in the gut. So there's these three counter hormones that are working hard to keep the sugar high. But depending on if you have a problem with the liver or your adrenals, you may have symptoms of hypoglycemia before you get hyperglycemia, which is diabetes. Some people don't have a problem with that, so they go right from prediabetes to diabetes, which is hyperglycemia, high sugar. And when you actually lose growth hormone, you lose the protein sparing effect, and you also have additional muscle loss just from that alone. So the combination of high cortisol and loss of growth hormone equals loss of muscle mass. You see this a lot in menopause. Growth hormone also stimulates cartilage growth, so you see a lot of people as they get older, they lose their joints as well because of this. All right, so what are we gonna to do to solve this? Number one, we don't wanna eat so frequently. We wanna do intermittent fasting. That's gonna take the stress off the pancreas and you'll instantly start improving your liver. You'll start increasing growth hormone. We wanna add exercise. That's gonna also burn off the excess glucose and get you into fat burning a lot faster. As far as what to eat, we wanna go low carb, we wanna go high potassium. I put the link down below of exactly what I'm gonna recommend, it's called healthy ketosis. All right guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. Daily notifications, that sounds weird. Well, I'll just remind you on a daily basis, how about that?